Hi, this is Amy, and today I'm answering a question from Debbie Perry of uh, Mason High School. She's a Spanish teacher, and she really wants to know how to make a Google lesson plan in calendar form, uh, something she can create and share, and she wants it to be really simple. So Debbie, I'm answering your question today, um, and I think you're really going to like this. So I've navigated over to my Google Calendar. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new calendar layer. So I'm going to find the down arrow to the right of my calendars and I'll click on create new calendar. Now I'll set the parameters so that I can easily see that this is a lesson plan calendar and um, I'll set all of my settings for this. I'm going to share this calendar with specific people. I'm going to come down here and share with specific people. So in this particular instance, I'm going to come grab Debbie's email address and I'm going to share the calendar with her so that she will see this. And actually, I better go back and call it sample so she won't be confused later when she sees both of those. But I'm going to share this with her and I'll do make changes and manage sharing so that she'll be able to add things, delete things and all that kind of stuff. And now I'll just click create calendar. Am I sure I want to give access to someone outside my domain? Yes, I do. So now I've created the calendar and in just a second, I don't know why, but sometimes there's a little bit of a delay, but in just a second it will appear in my list and there it is. So I'm going to choose this down arrow and choose display only this calendar. Now you can see it's nice and blank. So I know that Debbie teaches Spanish and um, I bet she has vocabulary test in her classroom. So I'll go ahead and add a vocabulary test to this calendar. I'll call it sample vocab test. And let's say that there's a pattern in Debbie's classroom. Let's say that, you know, every Friday maybe they have a vocab test. So I'm going to go in to edit this event into the, the big events editor. And I'm going to choose to repeat this event weekly, every one week on Friday, and to end it toward the end of the school year. So school usually ends about the end of May, maybe a week into June. That's going to give us lots of repeating events. Um, so I'll go ahead and save this now. And I'll see that there's a vocab test every single week on the sample calendar. And now if I want, I can display my holidays calendar and see which of those events I'll need to remove. So for example, we're not going to have a vocabulary test on this Friday because it's the day after Thanksgiving. And unless Debbie's in another country, I don't think she is, uh, she won't be in school that day. Um, Christmas Day is December 25th. We'll delete that. Only this instance is the option we want to choose. Uh, January 1st, New Year's Day, not going to be in school that day. We'll delete only this instance. So you can see how if we can recognize any kind of pattern, we can go through and create that and have our calendar fill up with events really quickly. Then let's say we decide we have a special event at school. We're not going to have the vocab test on the 6th. 16th, we'll just go ahead and move it back to the 15th on this one event. So all of the teachers in the group would be able to see this calendar. Debbie will be able to see it. And if I've given them manage editing and, and permissions, then they'll see it underneath my calendars. If they're just viewing the calendars, then they'll viewing the calendar, they'll see it underneath other calendars. Debbie, I hope that answers your question. Uh, please let me know if you have any further questions. It was a great one. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.